Okay. So, in the last lecture, we have seen what are the uh, ways to determine the absolute configuration of the molecule, what are the nomenclature systems that are used to describe the absolute configuration and to describe the relative configuration. Okay. Now, in this lecture, we will now bring in another topic, which is the, which is basically based on the relationship between the ligands that are present in a molecule, the ligands that are present in a molecule, the relationship between the ligands. Like if you have a carbon and if I have two ligands attached to this carbon, of course, it has to attach uh, to four ligands, say x, y, say p and q. And if I uh, want to know the relationship between this x and y, earlier what we have done? We have done the, the absolute configuration of this. We always concentrated on the stereogenic center. Now, in a departure from that, what we are doing now? We try to see that what is the relationship between the ligands that are present in a in a molecule in a three dimensional molecule which can exhibit uh, uh, stereochemical uh, attributes okay so this is little bit different we are not talking about the stereogenic center we are talking about the ligands what is the relationship between the ligands in a molecule okay now this x, y, p, we remove this, we put some groups. Suppose, we put a methyl, we take this very simple compound C H 2 and C H 3, okay. the, the pentane. Now, in, in this pentane, uh, sorry propane, the carbon, this carbon has these two hydrogens. And if I want to know the relationship between these two, hydrogens. Now, if I, uh, if I want to look separately, not from the molecule, if I segregate this hydrogen, take this ligand out of this carbon and take this ligand out of this carbon, they are same, both are hydrogens or take this methyl, methyl just look in isolation, okay, this is methyl and look in isolation of this group, this is also methyl. So, these two groups are same, these are called isomorphic Mm, these are called oh, sorry homo homomorphic groups sorry homomorphic groups homomorphic groups means groups which are in isolation look the same they look the same means they have the same constitution then they are called homomorphic groups or homomorphic ligands like these two methyls they are homomorphic ligands like the two hydrogens they are homomorphic ligands. Now, we want to know the relationship between these ligands and this relationship is what is called topicity. So, relationship between homomorphic ligands between homomorphic groups or ligands or atoms whatever it could be just atoms that is what is called topicity. What type of relationship? Geometric relationship or you can say stereochemical relationship between the homomorphic groups or ligands or atoms. Okay. Now, there are dif different types of relationship that is possible. Okay. One is called I said this relationship is called topicity. So, whatever the name given to this ligand set of ligands will be a, will, will have something in front before topic okay. like homotopic there are set of ligands which are homotopic there are a set of ligands which are heterotopic. Okay. Homotopic or heterotopic. Now, the name suggests that homotopic means like homomer I have said earlier, 
same molecule. So, homotopic means there is no difference between the groups or the ligands or the atoms that we are considering. Okay. First of all, they have to be homomorphic that means, they have to be same. Otherwise, there is the comparison see you cannot compare chlorine with a fluorine they are different ligands. Okay. We are comparing either two chlorines or two methyls or two hydrogens or two fluorines, but out of that you can have various situations where both the suppose these two hydrogens if I consider these two hydrogens can be homotopic or heterotopic depending on the structure of the molecule. Okay. Now, structure of the molecule and the way to determine whether they are homotopic or heterotopic. Heterotopic means they are now starting to deviate, they are differentiated, they can be differentiated. Okay. How to do that? There are there are two ways. You can consider symmetry elements to decide the topicity of ligands, or you can consider what is called substitution addition criteria. The substitution addition criteria is the more appealing one, the easier one. Okay. So, what it says that if you want to know what is the what is the relationship between these two hydrogens. So, you replace one of the hydrogen with a group X and then keep the molecule in the the other groups stay there. Okay. So, you get this compound you on, the, on the other hand if you replace the other hydrogen suppose okay, carbon with x. So, you get the you get this compound. Now, you are asked what is the relationship between these two compounds are they same are they stereoisomers or are they constitutional isomers or whatever. So, try to find the relationship between these two. Now, they are actually same because there is first of all their constitution is same and there is no question of stereoisomerism here, because there is no stereogenic center, because this is attached to two methyl same ligand. To have stereoisomerism you should have stereogenic center, interchange of groups does not lead to any stereoisomer. So, they are same. So, if they are same then that will be called homotopic. Okay. I, I think it is clear that will be called homotopic. In symmetry terms to find the homotopic, you have to find whether there is a C axis present here or not. Okay. Like this molecule has a C 2 axis, like if you put an axis like this and then rotate it by 180, this hydrogen will be there, that hydrogen comes here, methyl goes down, this methyl goes up, but it remains the same. So, it has got a C axis. That means, the proper axis the proper element of symmetry if that is present then also uh, you can say that they are homotopic. So, you can do two things either you do this this replacement of groups that means that is called substitution addition method or you can check whether what type of symmetry elements this poses. If it call poses a C 2 then this has these two ligands are homotopic. Okay. Similarly, you can say that these two methyls are also homotopic, you can do the same substitution uh, addition thing and you can uh, arrive at the same conclusion okay, between the two methyls. Now, this is homotopic, how do you arrive at heterotopic, heterotopic ligands? Suppose, I put a here CH 2 CH 3. So, this is now I just increase the carbon by 1. So, C H 3 then C H 2 then C H 2 then C H 3 and I ask what is the relationship between these two hydrogens. Okay. So, what you do? You again do the same substitution addition criteria. So, I substitute the left hydrogen by x. I get this, I substitute now the right hydrogen by x. So, I will get this C H 2 C H 3 and this is C H 3. Now, find out the relationship between these two. 
So, what is the relationship between these two? You can tell they are mirror images of each other, they are enantiomers now. Okay. So, these two hydrogens are not the same now. Earlier in homotopic system, they are leading to the same compound, here there is a difference. Okay. So, this difference tells you, uh, difference means they are now leading to enantiomers, not only stereoisomers, but enantiomers. So, these two hydrogens will be called not only heterotopic, but they will be called enantiotopic. They will be called enantiotopic. Okay. And there is a, see, it is not necessary always that you consider the ligands attached to the same carbon. You can you can also do it for different carbons. Suppose, if I ask that what is the relationship between these two hydroxy groups, they are homomorphic ligands because they are both OH, constitutionally they are same. So, what is the relationship between these two OHs? So, how do you do again apply the addition that principle? addition uh, substitution addition principle. So, you put x there C O 2 H and C H keep the other one intact. Okay. So, you get this compound and you replace this one the bottom one if you do that what you end up is O H H C H x and c o o h. Now, what is the relationship between this and that? What is the relationship between this and that? You can you know that Fisher projection formula can be rotated in plane by 180 degree that is allowed. So, to know the relationship between this and that what you do? You rotate this by 180 degree in plane and if you do that 180 degree in plane rotation in plane rotation you see this is going to that one or that is coming to this one that means they are same. So, what is the relationship between these two now? So, they are homotopic because the definition of homotopic is that this substitution is uh, the substitution addition gives the same compound. Okay. They are giving the same compound. So, these two OHs are homotopic. So, if you consider that earlier another concept the symmetry concept I said if there is a C 2 then that becomes homotopic and you see there is a C 2 here. If you rotate it by 180 it comes to the same molecule it becomes it remains the same molecule. So, it has got a C 2. So, these are homotopic ligands. So, that is the way to do. Interestingly if you replace this change the position of the wage to this side. Then if I ask what is the topicity of these two hydroxy, you see you again do that at replacement one, but now you have to the which is on the right. So, you replace the top one by x, the bottom one remains there and here you replace the, the bottom one by x the top one remains there. Okay. Now, you check what is the relationship between these two. Now, you cannot actually interconvert them. See if you rotate it by 180 degree it x and o h goes to the left side, but here x and o h are always on the right side. So, what is the relationship between these two? If you put a mirror here now So, this carbon goes to the top carbon. So, that becomes top x best is put the numbering system 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this will be your 4 that will be your 3 that will be your 2 that will be your 1. Okay. So, they are just mirror images of each other. So, you get mirror image systems by this addition uh, by the substitution addition principle. So, these two OHs are then they are 
enantiotopic okay and in terms of symmetry elements i gave you how to do homotopic homotopic ligands are connected by c2 heterotopic ligands if they are enantiotopic then they are connected by either sigma like here you see there is a sigma plane here there was earlier there was C 2. So, that made the two OHs homotopic. Now, these OHs are on the same side. So, C 2 is gone now, but in what is there now is a plane of symmetry. Those are called improper elements of symmetry. So, when there are improper elements of symmetry present, the ligands become enantiotopic. Okay. Improper elements of symmetry means it could be I, it could be sigma or it could be s. Okay. And finally, there is one more topicity which one should know and that is again I bring very similar molecules. not this one. I make I create a molecule. Now, I actually take the advantage of the wedge formula. Suppose, this is wedge, this is C L and this is H and then I have a C H 2 here and a C H 3. So, I consider this molecule. That means, I have a molecule which already has a built in chirality here a stereogenic center with a particular configuration. What is the configuration? You can determine this is your 1, that is your 2, that is your 3, but then you have to check where is the hydrogen, the fourth group and you can assign the configuration. But I started with a compound with a particular stereochemistry here okay. and then I am asking what is the relationship between these two hydrogens. Okay. Let us uh, try to do the R s configuration if you want. If we try to do the R s configuration, this is suppose see I draw the Fisher projection, this is 1, that is 2, this is 3, this is 4. So, in the Fisher, Fisher projection, I should look through the bonds which are similar. So, I look from this side. So, this is 4, this is 3, this is 2 and that is 1. 4 is on the horizontal side. So, whatever I see it should be the other way around. So, 1 to 3 it appears to be clockwise I anti clockwise. So, that should be R configuration. So, you have R configuration here. Now, what is the relationship between these two? Now, among these two hydrogens see one will be beta another will be alpha. Okay. So, if you if you replace this hydrogen by x by x or rep and then put the hydrogen here, keep the hydrogen here and replace this by x. So, either replace this by x or replace this by x. What will be the relationship between the two molecules? Now, to know that one basic principle one should learn and that is the mirror image of R is s. Okay. So, when you put a group x here, this becomes a stereogenic center. So, it will have a configuration. When I put x here, that will also have a configuration. Suppose, by replacing this hydrogen with x, this becomes r and suppose replacing this hydrogen by x, this becomes s. So, basically what I am getting is a r r compound, because this r was already they are built in and here I am getting S R. So, what is the what will be the relationship between the two molecules that I will be generating. See I can draw this. So, that will be x that will be hydrogen that will be methyl and this remains the same which C L H and the other molecule will look like x then this is hydrogen, this is methyl 
and this is C, it remains the same. What is the relationship between these two? These two are now no longer enantiomers because I said R mirror image of R is S. So, the mirror image of R R should be S S, but here R R and S R. So, they are now diastereomers. because enantiomers will be R R or S S or S S or R R. So, here substitution elimination is leading a uh, substitution addition sorry keep on saying elimination substitution addition creates two diastereomers. So, these two hydrogens then will be diastereotopic. will be diastereotopy. Okay. So, basically we have learned topicity is again to summarize topicity is basically the relationship the geometric relationship between the between two homomorphic ligands in a molecule. There can be uh, different types of topicity homotopic. Homotopic systems are, uh, are connected by C 2 axis number 1 and addition substitution addition gives the same molecule in homotopic system. In enantiotopic system the ligands are interconnected by either I or sigma or S that means an improper element of symmetry is present and by substitution addition you end up with creating enantiomeric pairs. Okay. So, that becomes enantiotopic and there is a third scenario where already a stereogenic center with a particular configuration is already present. Then if you are trying to compare to homomorphic ligands, you will see that you end up with diastereomer. So, these ligands become diastereotopic and in terms of symmetry because this is a chiral molecule because you have already a built in chiral center. So, there is no question of any element of symmetry present in it. So, basically now we have three scenarios when C 2 is present ligands become homotopic, when sigma i or s present the ligands become enantiotopic, when nothing is present that means the molecule is chiral then the homomorphic ligands become diastereotopic. What is the utility of knowing this topicity? The utility is that their behavior towards different reagents. Okay. Homotopic ligands behave the same to every reagent whether the reagent is chiral or achiral. Enantiotopic ligands behave similarly towards achiral reagents that means reagents which do not have any chirality and heterotop and then diastereotopic ligands behave differently all the time whether it is a chiral reagent or an achiral reagent. There is a spectroscopy called NMR spectroscopy by which you can differentiate between these ligands. Okay. Diastereotopic ligands always differ in their the signal where it comes. Okay. Enantiotopic ligands unless you add a chiral solvent they appear in the same re region okay. and homotopic ligands always come in the same region same signal whether it is a chiral solvent or a chiral solvent. Okay. I hope that is clear. So, this is what is the topicity. So, we have now done uh, up to the topicity. Next what is remaining is how to assign the absolute configuration of these ligands, because these ligands also can be because to to know that which hydrogen I am talking about in a system, I have to assign a configuration which are called pro systems, pro R or pro S systems, but that we will discuss in the next class. Okay, thank you.